from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering InterConnect 2017. Brought to you by IBM. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Las Vegas, the Mandalay Bay for IBM InterConnect 2017. It's theCUBE coverage. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is our famous CUBE alumni, uh, Tan May Bakshi, welcome back to theCUBE. Now you're a cognitive developer and your new business card is part of the Darwin ecosystem says <laughs> algorithmic, algorithmic, mystic. Algorithmist. <laughs> Al algorithmist. Algorithmist. Yes. <laughs> uh, Welcome back. So, thank you, I'm very glad to be back on theCUBE. Uh, and yes, of course, as I said, uh, I'm working on many new projects with artificial intelligence and of course IBM Watson, uh, including ones that are provided by Darwin Ecosystem. And of course, we're working on this really interesting project called The Cognitive Story, which you will be seeing more about on my talks on Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, and, the, and the Cognitive Story is basically this collaboration between IBM, Darwin Ecosystem, not rocket science and me. Uh, and so basically we're working towards really using the power of cognitive uh, in order to change people's lives in a positive way. Uh, and so that's, that's what I'm doing uh, at the Darwin Ecosystem generally with IBM Watson and AI. Well, last year we had a great chat. I remember talking about algorithms and software, super, super fun. Yes. What's changed in the past year? Give us the update on <laughs> you uh, and two, What's changing the code? Definitely. Um, what, do you, what are some of the things you're working on? Yeah, sure. So since last year, first of all, a lot has changed. Uh, a lot of new trends have emerged in the, ge in the general topic of technology, uh, like cybersecurity, something that people are starting to take a lot more seriously now, uh, with things like AI and IBM Watson starting to be incorporated in, in uh, with that. Uh, and of course, though, really from my side, what I've mainly been doing uh, is not, I've actually started to work not only with IBM Watson's cognitive capabilities, uh, and not only the cognitive capabilities provided by these services, but also my own custom services, uh, powered by neural networks uh, and other machine learning algorithms. Uh, like just for example, the cognitive story is powered by my own you know, uh, custom coded uh, neural networks, and that's why, of course, uh, I've, been given, I've been given the designation of algorithmus, because I love to work with algorithms, fine tune them, uh, and of course design them. Uh, and so that's actually what's been going on for the past year, but mainly, I guess you could say now, my real focus uh, is on how we can use artificial intelligence and cognitive computing in order to, first of all, amplify and really augment human capability, uh, and of course, how we can use it to change people's lives in a positive way, especially in fields like healthcare, where, where we can like, you know, save people's lives with this technology, where we can uh, make people's lives easier with this technology, uh, like just for example, what IBM Watson is doing uh, for people with autism uh, and how it's helping them uh, with the applications that it provides, uh, what IBM Watson's doing for the elderly uh, in India with the new Chintu robot that IBM Watson is creating, and so much that Watson's doing with healthcare. That's really what I'm focused in with cognitive computing in general. What are some of the algorithms that you've been working on? What's the intent? <laughs> sure, well I've actually been working on a lot of different algorithms, mainly in the uh, AI space, and of course how we can create neural networks to understand brainwave patterns, and you'll be seeing more of that on, on Tuesday and Wednesday with the cognitive story, uh, but uh, I've also been working, of course, on algorithms that I've already created, you know, uh, get, uh, as I said, Ask Tanmay, you, you probably remember that from yeah, last sure, year, yeah. the NLQA system. Uh, I've been working more on Ask Tanmay, and in fact, in June, in Developer Connect of last year, uh, I actually open sourced Ask Tanmay, and so of course, I've been you know, working on that, improving it, about to release you know, version three, uh, which is really fun, and of course, since it's open source, I love to share my knowledge uh, with this code so other people can learn from it uh, and learn how to use this type of AI technology in their own applications as well. As a young uh, next generation mogul, software mogul, that you'll soon be, you're already one now, but you're still young, but you got a lot more ways to go, but you're living in a great time because, I wish I could be your age right now because machine learning is really hot right now and it's, mm -hmm. and it's, it's growing because of the cloud. The cloud is, gives you scale and compute exactly. power. Uh, and there's also a cultural vibe going on around social good. Yes. So talk about machine learning, what you're excited about there specifically, and some of the things that you see from your generation of developers around this desire to provide social good. Yeah, definitely. Uh, well, I guess we should start off with really my main focus of interest, in fact, as you said, are really cloud computing, cognitive computing, and IoT. Because in their respective fields, they are the next level of computing, and in fact, we're already starting to adopt them. Cloud computing has already been adopted on on a huge scale. Uh, cognitive computing, we're getting there. And IoT is, again, starting to be accepted by a lot of different people. And you and might not even get a driver's license because by the time you get your driver's <laughs> license, it's going to be autonomous vehicles. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. 
<laughs> and so, of course, IoT is being used everywhere. Uh, and so is cloud computing and cognitive. Uh, and so really what I've been focused on in the past year uh, is, uh, first of all, trying to, get, uh, trying to get developers really interested in cognitive. But as you said, uh, developers are really interested in doing you know, social good with these technologies. Uh, and just imagine this, what we're doing with the cognitive story uh, right now is we're basically uh, for example, I can't of course go into too much detail about this right now yet, but we are basically taking these cognitive services and we're allowing people who don't have the natural ability to be able to express themselves or communicate or move in any way, really, uh, to be able to express themselves uh, and make their, and communicate their decisions and communicate their emotion or whether or not they're comfortable and more uh, through this cognitive system. Uh, and of course that's why it's so interesting because imagine if you can you know, talk, in, in, imagine you know that, okay, I want to do this, but you're unable to express that, you're unable to communicate that to the people around you, that means like you're quite literally trapped in your own body. And having cognitive computing uh, able to come in uh, and you know allow you to communicate and create your own, I guess you could say, uh, unique language using these brainwave patterns, that's something that I absolutely believe is, like, I guess you could say, the greatest gift ever, yeah. to be able to give you the ability to communicate through artificial intelligence. So that's really why I love working in the healthcare field. Now, now am, I, am I right, you've written a book? Yes, actually, uh, and it actually started uh, from last Interconnect. Uh, last Interconnect I started, and now I'm actually done writing my book called Hello Swift, iOS App Programming for Kids and Other Beginners. Uh, and it's actually currently available for pre-order on the publisher's website, as well as lots of other bookstores online. And of course, the final hard copy will be, will be released soon. Uh, but basically, this book is really targeted towards getting the youth and really kids uh, interested in programming, and specifically iOS programming through Swift. And of course, as you know, Swift is open source, and I really support open source software. What are some of the cool things the young kids want in software these days? Because there is a lot, like I said, there's a, there's a tool chest of great stuff coming mm -hmm. on, like composable software, Lego blocks, which people call like Lego, Lego blocks. Yes. What are some of the cool things that kids want these days? Well, there are a lot of things, but I actually like to highlight the main way that I like to get the youth interested in coding. And it's by showing them something that they find really interesting. And so, like for example, something that they see in movies a lot. Like for example, artificial intelligence is the absolute perfect example of how you can have something like artificial intelligence that can get kids interested and youth, the youth interested in these technologies like programming in order to start to get them programming because of course we need them to well, be prepared Well gaming and AI are two like sci-fi is AI kind of cool, exactly. futuristic. Exactly. And then gaming also is very interactive, exactly. immersion based. And in fact, that's why a lot of companies are starting to merge, you know, AI, cognitive, uh, sorry, AI and games, uh, and of course, virtual reality. Virtual reality is something else that you know kids and really everybody uh, is really interested in nowadays. And if we can, uh, and in fact, we are taking uh, these AI technologies and incorporating them with these other technologies like gaming, with the virtual reality, augmented reality, mixed reality, and we're trying trying to create this really interesting mix, especially for kids. And also, one more thing here. Uh, is that not only are we doing this, AI is, so, you know, AI is so diverse, it's all around us. It's on your phone, it's on your smart TV, it's in your car, uh, and that's really why we should be showing, uh, we should be showing the youth uh, that this is all around us. We need to start adopting these technologies. So last year I asked you the question, take us to a day in the life of 10 May where you had a discovery. <laughs> so let's yes. play that back this year. Give us a time this year where you had a discovery. Mm -hmm. It could be super cool or maybe just a uh, breakthrough in some small way sure. that was like, uh, notable that you'd like to share. Yes, and it actually happened recently. Uh, and again, I'm going to take this back uh, to uh, uh, just a few weeks ago, actually, uh, when I started working uh, with, uh, I mean, I've actually been working with my own custom machine learning algorithms for quite some time, since, you know, uh, just after last Interconnect, actually, I started working with my own custom algorithms uh, for machine learning. Uh, but a few weeks ago, I actually started working with those custom algorithms in the healthcare space. And one application that I created that I find actually quite interesting because of the capability it has to help uh, doctors, and I'll tell you this in a moment, is that it's an application that can take 69 attributes about any patient, okay? Uh, and it can actually tell you if they have a hearing disorder, and if so, what's their hearing disorder. Uh, and, and the reason this is so so great is because this can be of great help to audiologists, for example. Uh, and in fact, I am actually in communication with an audiologist from the UK, uh, and I'm actually you know, we're, uh, you know, know, collaborating with him to try and see uh, what this could hold in store for the future of audiology, and the future of healthcare in general with artificial intelligence. Apart from that though, the Cognitive Story is another great project uh, 
where of course I'm trying to combine machine learning with these extremely powerful capabilities that Watson provides in order to create a great mix in order to help uh, people express themselves even though they don't have the natural ability to do so. So Tim, a, obviously a big support, you are a big supporter of open source. Yes. Uh, you said uh, earlier you, you open source some of your algorithms, asked mm -hmm. Tanmay. Yes. What's been the response? Have you had contributors? And Yes, actually, and that's the greatest part about open source, because now the thing is, you see, let's just say there's some issues with Ask Tanmay, there's some, uh, as you, every, I mean, this is general open source stuff, uh, but now Ask Tanmay is really, I guess you could say, evolving much faster than I could ever have programmed it, because there are many people coming to me, you know, collaborating with me, uh, helping out, submitting, you know, issues, pull requests, and more, uh, and with Ask Tanmay especially, now I'm actually about to release version 3.0 as well, because I was able to get that help from the community. Uh, and of course, because of that, not only does the community help me, but I'm able to help the community by sharing my source code so that they can learn from that and build their own QA systems on top of it. Awesome, so give us the, give us the um, report card on, on Bluemix and Watson. And be fair now, I sure. know you're IBM champion. <laughs> yes, now IBM Bluemix and Watson, I can tell it, especially Watson, it has evolved a lot since last Interconnect. Of course, you know, the new services that they're providing, like the natural language understanding service and more. Uh, and really what I believe is that not only are they providing these new services, but they're also improving their existing services. Like the visual recognition service, how they're, you know, doing the image similarity, how they're improving their default classifier, how they are uh, merging it with the Alchemy, uh, Alchemy Vision services in order to make it even more powerful. Uh, and of course, the new, uh, you know, live training features that they're incorporating into visual recognition, how they're, you know, improving speed to text, and they're generally taking all of these Watson services that already exist and making them even more powerful uh, so developers can really leverage them in their applications. Apart from that though, IBM Linux has been going great as well uh, with the new services it provides, especially from SoftLayer. Uh, of course, Bluemix is going great, Watson, uh, it's been rapidly evolving as well. I know you've got your IoT watch on, the yes. Apple iWatch. You mentioned you're doing some stuff with IoT. What are some of the wearables you think that are needed right now? Because we had the uh, mm. founder of Indiegogo on, and yes. we know the success of the crowdsourcing is, yeah. there's a lot of tinkerers and inventors out there who now can be up and running, so we're expecting to have a big maker culture exactly. growing exponentially around yes. new stuff. Exactly. So what do you see that's needed from your generation? Chip well. implant in the brain, uh, <laughs> what's, what's going on? Well, what do you, what, do you, uh, what would you want? Well, uh, in terms of, uh, I guess you could say, wearables, um, there are a lot of different things that people are doing with wearables, uh, including you know, virtual reality is one of the main things that I believe uh, is, I guess you could say, the most trending topic in terms of wearables. Of course, watches, we've got glasses now that they're creating, like a Microsoft HoloLens, uh, and all of these different products that are focused around basically uh, being able to, I guess you could say, run, you know, uh, have these technologies available on your body, uh, by your, you know, uh, on yourself, quite literally. Uh, and to make it so easy to use. And really what I believe is that one of the main things that's really going to power uh, these, these wearables is AI, artificial intelligence. Uh, like for example, your, even the Apple Watch has AI features in it. Uh, I mean, all you know, virtual reality is powered by artificial intelligence as well. And without that, it becomes extremely hard, if not impossible, for people to code in things like virtual reality. So what I believe is that we need, I guess you could say, more adoption uh, to, uh, to these cognitive technologies. Uh, and we need people to adapt to it in their everyday environment and really accept that it's all around them and that it's going to be extremely hard to live without it. Uh, and of course, we need to start getting the youth involved in these technologies for them to be prepared for their, that future uh, in which cognitive computing is everything. And in fact, cognitive computing isn't just the future, it's the present as well. And that's why we need to start getting prepared for it. And that's why it's all around us. John was joking earlier about you, know, you getting your license. You're 14 now, is that right? 13 actually, You're about still... to be 14 in October. Okay, great. So soon to be 14. But so yes. you'll probably get your license and still be able to drive in two years. We're not going to have totally autonomous vehicles. But what are your maybe your, twenty-five years? What are your thoughts on that, though? Uh, you know, what's the driving age in, in Canada? Sixteen or yes, I believe sixteen. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, so. so you know, sixteen years old. It's a symbol of freedom. You get you know you, yes. you, you get autonomy. You know, yeah. and, and so. how, what's your feeling about you know maybe the next generation and and and, and them inheriting yeah. autonomous vehicles and exactly. not having 
you know, the stick shift to drive, like when we were kids, we all learned on a stick shift. But what do you, what do you sense that? What do your colleagues and your, your other yeah. friends say about that? Sure. So now, driving uh, self-driving cars is something that, you know, is already being worked on heavily, actually. It's a big research topic. Tesla, huge company that's really working towards, you know, self-driving cars, autonomous cars. They've already got, like, half of that done. They just need to work on the rest half. Yeah. Uh, of course, we've also got Google working on their self-driving cars and so many other companies uh, who at least aren't creating self-driving cars right now, uh, or you know, most are actually starting to work towards self-driving cars, including Uber. In fact, Uber is creating those self-driving taxis that can take you around a city without you having to actually have a driver. Uh, but the thing is, what I believe uh, is that th this AI technology is powerful enough to be able to, you know, work with these, you know, autonomous vehicles and more. Uh, it's just that uh, there are a few, I guess you could say, rough edges that need to be worked out with these technologies, which I believe can be done. Uh, it's just a matter of time before we are able to get, you know, completely autonomous cars on the road. It's just that, you know, there might be a few issues with, uh, like, the, the ethics of self-driving cars and, like, uh, you know, that, that, that's an entire uh, topic on its own. That would require an entirely separate interview. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, generally I think autonomous cars, that's a great, uh, great place to go with artificial intelligence because that could completely eliminate uh, or at least significantly reduce the amount of, for example, human error there is in driving. Uh, and, and, and of course get you around traffic faster uh, and generally maybe not even have traffic jams. There's just so many advantages to having autonomous cars uh, and of course that's why cognitive computing is all around us. So AI is hot, IoT is exactly. hot, you're hot, you get a great Great fan base, we know that from last year. The reaction from our Thank audience you. was spectacular. You almost won our Cube Madness competition because um, you retweeted all your followers or all your YouTube followers. Thank you. Congratulations, great to see you. Thank you, Come it's great to be Cube. on theCUBE. Okay, we're back more from theCUBE live here in Las Vegas for IBM Interconnect, AI, cognitive computing, collective intelligence, all the data here on theCUBE. We'll be right back with more after the short break, stay with us.